Hello everyone, welcome to your week 2 lecture for counting 204. Uh, so in this lecture what we're going to do is we're going to continue our, uh, our continue on our Omni electronic file uh, from the end of lesson 2. Uh, so in this lecture what we're going to do is we're going to focus on lesson 3. So week 2 includes the two lessons that you need to cover lesson 3 and lesson 4. And this cannot be completed before you complete lesson one and two. So the way these chapters work uh, is you have to complete the first chapter to start the second chapter and you have to complete the second chapter to complete lesson three. So in week two, I'm hoping that all of you guys were able to install uh, the Sage 300 on your computer and anybody who was not able to install it and if there's a technical issue they're having and they cannot resolve I don't want you to spend too much time on worrying about getting the software installed. Uh, look at the second option. The second option is the one that I'm teaching in this course is uh, is using the Humber app stream. So if you're not able to install the software, I recommend you to start following the process that I showed you guys in the last week. And I'm going to do that uh, in today's class as well, which is using the Humber application and streaming website. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to complete lesson three. So everything that you need to know or you need to get from me is is uh, provided to you in the learning material week two. So when you go into your Blackboard site and you go into the learning material and you click on week two, you come across that there's all these files that are already there. The lecture is not posted yet. But after I complete lesson two and lesson three, I'll post my recordings right here as well. So now to get access to your notes, uh, again, these are the notes just summarizing what you need to do in the chapters uh, in, in your test book. Uh, so week two, my notes tells you what to do. So it's just simply walk you through a process of how we're going to complete lesson three. And these are the different exercises that you want to make sure you understand how you need to do all those things uh, in your uh, yeah, using the software and then once you complete lesson three I recommend all of you to do a database dump once that part is done you're going to start lesson four and then I'll walk you through how you're going to open up the lesson four and then you complete all the exercises that are provided to you in lesson four okay so once you complete lesson four, you do a database dump from lesson four and you complete the stuff that you required for lesson four. So now that's where your notes are going to be. And these are the end of lesson five. So if you're using the Humber app stream, every time you want to start a chapter, you always need a file, which is the backup from the end of the chapter. So you have two ways you can do that. You can create your own backup every week. So when you finish uh, lesson two, you can create your own end of lesson two, okay? And that one I recommend you to do is end of lesson two and you put your initial at the end so that way you know that it is your backup. Then you never need to come to the blackboard to take the database file because you have your own. And then what you do is you go on the Humber app stream website, you upload the end of lesson two, the ones that you have, and then you continue with your work. And the same way that you need to do is if you are starting lesson four, you need end of lesson three. So you can get that from here. There is one more thing that you need for lesson three. So in lesson three, what I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to show you how you can import the list of the accounts. So to import, you need a CSV file. And that file is something right here that I provided to you. Now I'm also giving you a backup file for the challenge exercise. If you are one of the students who require, who wants to do extra work and take the next step in, in doing more exercises, because at, at the end of the day, the more you do, the better you're going to get. So if you wanted to complete the challenge exercise end of lesson three, what you can do is you can use this backup, then do a database load, and then you can complete end of lesson three and then also complete your own backup and the lesson three and then also complete lesson four as well from the challenge exercise okay 
if you need any help or any guidelines in completing the channel exercises uh, let me know i'll be more than happy to help all right now we're gonna start lesson three now to complete lesson three you should have completed everything on uh, at, uh, everything up to lesson two so now if i go back to the notes To get started with lesson three, what you need, there is two ways you can work on this uh, on this software is one, if you have the Sage 300 installed on your computer. If you have Sage 300 installed on your computer, you simply go into the start window, find Sage 300, Sage 300. Okay, uh, uh, it's on my other screen, so I cannot show you. So you just type in Sage 300, and then you select the program. Once you select the program, then it will open up on your screen, and then you select Omni Electrical, Omni Electronics, and then you start from exercise 3.1. Okay, it's very simple, okay? But you have to make sure that all the work that you have done is completed so you have completed everything up to lesson two now would you require to do a database load if you're working on your own computer the answer is no the only time you need to do the database load is if you wanted to override your file with my file okay so what does that mean it means that you're not going to use your own work. You are going to use the work that I provided. So in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to use the same process that you're going to use in step two, in method two, is you're going to download the end of lesson two, then do a database. You can skip this step, but what you do is you do a database load into Omni Electronics and Omni Sys, and then you will complete, then you start say 300 and continue from 3.1. But that one you only wanted to do is if you wanted to override your file, okay? So if you are happy with your own work and you wanted to continue with your own file, you're more than happy to just continue working as you finish one chapter, move it to the next chapter and never need to worry about the database dump or database load. Now, the next thing is, if you're using the Humber app stream, so I'm going to be using Humber app stream. So if you're using Humber application, there is some extra steps you need to do, and I'm going to walk you through that today. So the extra step is you need end of lesson two. You download the file from the Blackboard, and you go into the app stream, download that zip file into the temporary folder. Once that part is done, you go into the database load and load end of lesson two into Omni Dat and Omni Sys. Okay, so we need to do this step. Okay, so for somebody who is using Sage 300 on your computer, you can simply go into your old program, look Sage 300 2019, and once it opens, select Omni Electronics, and then from there you start from exercise 3.1. But if you are using Humber application streaming the like what I'm going to do, you are going to do all these three steps. So pay careful attention on, on for these notes, uh, for these steps, and make your, uh, make your handwritten notes of what the steps are going to be. You will do that every time, and you will be comfortable after you do a couple of times. Okay, so first you are going to download the end of lesson two. So this is the end of lesson two. You come right here, you click end of lesson two. Now, where is it, this file? This file is saved on my computer right here. Okay, it's in my download files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all the other ones that I don't need. Uh, so this is the file right here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I need to upload so see that next second step there is. So the second step that I have is upload the end of lesson two onto my 
Humber App Stream. So now I need to go on to Humber App Stream. You can save this link on as a bookmark on your computer. See, this is the link. You can do a bookmark so that way you don't have to look for it every time. So here I'm going to put a bookmark and I say Humber So therefore I don't need to google it every time. Now I'll come here right here, I click on the facility of business and then you enter your login information which is the same one that you use for login at your computer or your blackboard. Then here you're going to select stage 300. So this is the one that's going to take you uh, take almost 30 seconds to one minute. So be patient with that. Okay, since it's uh, doing the registration, I'm going to open up, uh, open the notes. So in chapter three, what are the key things that you're going to be learning? So the main focus from chapter three is for you to understand how to create chart of accounts. There are different types of accounts that need to be created. We are going to go through all the different types of accounts, how we create them. What are the different things that you need to look for? And also I'm going to show you how you can import chart of accounts as well. That's going to be one of our exercise. And then we are also going to look at the allocation accounts, how we create the allocation account, what is the purpose of doing that. We are also going to go through a process of setting up the default closing account. And then finally, we're going to look at how we're going to print a chart of accounts. Okay, so we're going to do all of these things. All right, so now the session is registered. Okay, you have the application open. So now, second step here we have is uploading that end of lesson two on my app stream. So right here, this is the temp folder. So if I click on my files, you click on the temporary folder and then you, what you do is you can say upload the file. You click on the upload the file, you go into the downloads and see this is where your file is. So you're gonna click on it and now this file is uploaded on the Humber server. Now, what's the next step is uploading it and unzipping the folder using an application. So what application are we gonna use? We're gonna use the tools 7-zip file manager. So we go right here, you're going to locate your file, which is this one and you click extract and you're going to press OK and now what this, this this has done it unzipped the file into the folder and that is the file that we need now what we're going to do is now we're going to do database load so now we're moving into the step of database load so if any of you guys are planning of using the file that I have you need to unzip that on your computer and then do a database load. Now do a database load is the same process if you're using the app stream or if you're doing it on your computer. So do database load, you click on database load. It's going to ask you the password. The password is admin. And now you're going to redirect this to the same folder that we unzipped. So temporary file end of lesson and you go right here. So whenever you are clicking on this, you always want to click on the parent folder. So if you click on the first one, it cannot find Omni Dad and Sys because it's not here. So you always have to go into the parent folder to find the database. So you click on end of lesson two. Okay. Okay. Again, see now it found 
Omni Dad and Omni Sales. So first we're gonna connect Omni Dad with Omni Dad right here. Next, now we're gonna do the same thing with Omni Six. Next, link that with Omni Sales. Now these database are going to pull the information from these folders and we're going to click finish. Once we click finish, it's going to extract all that information and and upload it to OmniDad and OmniSys. Now you're done with that, you press cancel. Now you go into stage 300. Now you're going into step number, you're starting your exercise 3.1. So now what you're going to do is you're going to open stage 300 and start from exercise 3.1. So you go in, click on stage 300, and it's going to show you the database that you have, which is OmniDat, and you're going to enter the session date 0101-2021 and press OK. You see that? Remember when we were doing this uh, previously last week? It takes you straight into activating the admin services. Now I didn't do that because it already has the data from chapter one and chapter two. So now if you go into the common services, you see that company profile, it has the full address of the company. Now if you wanted to print the reports and have that report shows your name, you can put your name right here with that and also put your contact name here as well. So that way in the future, if you print any reports, it will have your name on it. That is the first thing that you want to do is you change the name to your name so that way you know that it is your own file. All right, so now if you go back here and you look at the general ledger and you see that does this has all the work that you completed last week? I can go back to the source code and click on this browser and I see all the source codes here. And I can go into the segment codes and see the segment codes are already there as well. So those were the stuff that you did in chapter two and they are all here because we use the end of lesson to exercise. Now what are we going to do? Now we are going to start with lesson three, exercise 3.1. So exercise 3.1 is simply asking you to open say 300 using the, the session date 0101 2019. So the main key objective for this for this chapter is understanding how we create chart of accounts. So for chapter 3 we are going to focus on GL accounts. So GL accounts are right here and these this is a, this is the chart of account. So right now, if I go into chart of account, I don't see anything because there's no accounts created. Okay, so now to create the accounts, there is different ways you can create that, but what the easiest way one is you go into the accounts and right here you enter the account and click add. That's how you create the account. Now, there are different columns you need to complete. So I'm going to explain to you guys what these columns are. Then we will use this exercise to create the GL accounts. So first is the account number. Remember in lesson two, we created different account structure. There was one account structure was ACC. That was the four digit account number. Then you had another account structure, which was DIV that has four digit of the accounts and the three digit for your division number. Okay, so first you had to put the account number. So if it's an account, ACC, you have to have the account number with the four digit. If it's a DIV, then it has to have a four digit account number and the three digit of the division number as well. Then you put the account description, what the title of that account is. Then you put the structure code, which represent the accounting structure. And then the normal balance of that account. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are an accountant. You know what is the normal balance of each of the account that you use in accounting. So you can have that normal balance debit or a credit. Then you have an account type. Telling the system is this a balance sheet account, income statement account, or a retaining account. 
then you go into the account groups so the account groups represent the different account categories so if you remember in stage 50 simply counting when you were uh, using simply counting and you use uh, the different headings so those headings were you customizing the headings by yourself and then creating a heading total so with the stage 300 you or they already gave you the default account groups so when you create an account you assign that account to that particular account group and that account will get grouped into these categories so it is mandatory for you to select the account group then the status the active or inactive so when you create an account you have to mention is it an active or inactive so you only do that is if you planning of not using a particular account you can change that and make that account inactive but you have to make sure that there is no balance in that account before you make that account inactive then here's your different categories of the accounts and I'll brief you what they are and then we are going to use them as we go through the course. A control account. So a control account is the account that you cannot post any transaction in the general ledger. For example, I have an account receivable account. In account receivable, I don't want anybody to post any entries. I want that, control, that account receivable to be controlled by account receiver module so whenever you make an account a control account and you try to post a journal entry in the general ledger it will give you an error badge because that account you are not allowed to post any entries okay so see when i click in a control account it will tell you you to identify which sub ledger will control this account okay so we will create some control account in the future and i'll show you guys how that's going to work auto allocation account so the auto allocation account is if you have an account where you post all the amount and then after you finish the month and you want the amounts to be allocated to a different accounts and then you select that account as an auto allocation okay for example uh, let's say Humber is an organization and it has 14 different schools so when the Humber receive electrical bill, it's not going to tell you how much was the electricity used by business school versus the IT school. So what the, what the accounts payable department is going to do is when they receive an electricity bill, they keep booking them into utilities expenses. And what they will do is they will create utility expenses as an auto allocation account and then have that utility expense allocate that to the different business schools are uh, different schools so it's a utilities 100 represent business utilities 200 represent nursing school utilities 300 represent the IT school and so far and then when you select the auto allocation you identify the GL accounts and put a percentage how much you wanted to allocate to those different GL account so in that case that will auto allocate the amount from the utility expenses to those sub accounts using the different GL account for those divisions based on the percentage that you will set up in the auto allocation account. We are going to use the auto allocation account feature in this chapter. And the third one is a roll up. So the roll up is more like a, a sub account, sub uh, subtotal account. For example, if you want to create a bank account, and you have different bank accounts, CIBC, TD, and Scotia Bank. But in the GL account, what you want to do is you want to create a one account called bank account, and then you want all these three accounts, the TD, RBC, and Scotia Bank, get rolled up into that one bank account. Then you can select bank account as a roll up account, and then you have to identify which GL account it's going to roll up to. Okay. So that is the future that we use for a roll-up. So we're not going to have any roll-up accounts in this uh, in this test book, but if you ever use that, that's how you can use the roll-up account. All right, so that's about uh, the different types. So now you guys will go through the different stuff that was provided in your test book. 
you can read through it and see how how that will help you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys to create these accounts okay so i'm going to do that into two parts uh, first we're going to create these accounts manually and then we're going to go through an exercise of exporting those accounts uh, using that excel the csv file we have so on page 104 and 105 you guys have the list of the accounts that you need to create so let's start with bank account so bank account is an account 1000 and here we're going to say the bank account name is checking and is the account structure acc yes because this is simply an account acc so you leave it as acc what's the normal balance for the bank account is debit and the category is balance sheet now what account group does this belongs to so you pick the most relevant one so this one relevance is the cash and this is active and you never need to go through these other tabs you only focus on the detailed detail tab and you click add and then you go into the next one 1010 and the 1010 is another bank account and we can call this bank payroll so there's two bank accounts we have this is account 1000 with bank checking and there's another one is 1010 just the bank uh, i know this one is used for payroll so we will just put the description bank payroll everything else remain the same we click and the next account we have is 1030 and that is petty cash and that's debit and also remains to the same category then we have 1100 and that is accounts receivable now this one same but the account group need to be changed everything else remains same we click add 1110 and this is allowance for doubtful debt and now this one turnover balance is credit remember the allowance account is a contra account so the normal balance is supposed to change to credit I will still leave the categories to an account receiver because we want them grouped together. And then we have 1200 which is inventory. The normal balance for inventory is debit and the category is going to change to 03. Then we have 1500. This is manufacturing equipment ACC debit and the category changed to fixed asset then we have 1510 which is furniture and fixture and the, it is also belongs to fixed asset and then we have 1520 that represent office equipment ACC debit 05 then we have 15 30 and that's building that's fixed asset add then we have 15 40 which is ICO and belongs to the same category okay so now i'm going to show you guys if i try to put the same number again let's say if i put 15 20 and i go here see it pulls up that number so it doesn't allow you to use the same number again okay so this is the way that you set up the accounts manually okay so in your assignment or your test or in your final exam whenever you need to create an account you are going to be doing it manually okay but in a real world you can actually import and export the account 
So if you have the same company and you create another company which is very similar, what you can do is you can export the accounts. Uh, you can import the accounts that you have for that company and then when you are into a new company then you export those accounts into the, that new company and that way it will copy the same account that you have in the previous company. So now what we're going to do in the next exercise is we're going to stop right here and we have almost two and a half pages or almost three pages of the accounts that we need to create. If we were to create this manually, it will take another 20 to 30 minutes to create these accounts. And then there is a chances that I'll make a spell mistake or I put the account to a wrong category. Those kind of mistakes still could happen. Now, if you have a Excel file or CSV file with the, with the account names, the title, the category, the normal balance, the account group, and the account status, everything is already in that C CSV file, we can simply export that file and have those accounts created within less than 30 seconds. So what we're going to do is, if you go into the Blackboard, and you see that under the import, I have chart of account. So I can click on this chart of account. Then what this is going to do is, it's going to create, uh, download this chart of account onto your download folder. Now, what are you going to do? We're gonna import this into. So if you are working on your, on your, on your computer on your C drive, this is already there. You can simply redirect this file to this, uh, uh, redirect it to this file to have the import happens. But now if you're working on the app stream, you need to take this one into your temporary folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Humber app stream. Okay, I'm going to come right here. I'm gonna close this window for a second. And I'm going to go into my files, temporary files, and I'm going to tell the system to upload a file. And this time I'm going to upload the chart of accounts. See now it's on my temporary folder. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go right here to the accounts. Now I'm not going to do the account manually. I'm going to do is file import. And it's going to ask you, what do you want to import? Sorry, I'm not exporting, I'm importing. So I'm going to import and it's going to ask you, do you want to import the account profiles, allocation, roll up? We say, you know what, we simply going to do the basic account profiles. So we're going to do account basic profiles and we press OK. And then it's going to ask you the type. Say, what is the type of file? The one that I gave you is the single CSV file. So we select that. And do you want the title record to be selected? We're going to say yes. And then from here, we have insert, update, insert, and update. So if you want to insert, it means it's only going to insert any new accounts. If I say insert and update, it means that if there is an account number that already exists, and if I made a mis mistake or misspelling that, it will update those accounts as well. But if I do update, it's only going to update the accounts that are already in the system. It's just not going to insert any new accounts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert and update. Because uh, this way, if I, there's any account that I created by mistake and it was not supposed to be what it is, it will update that account, okay? Now it's gonna ask you the location of that file. So now because you're working on the app stream, your file has to be in the temp folder. So if you're working on your C drive, then you just redirect, redirect this into that file where you have 
the chart of accounts. So this is right here. And we press OK. See, when I press OK, it automatically went in. It says zero count updated, 50 counts inserted. So that means it inserted 50 different accounts. It didn't even take, uh, take one second. It was just a click of a button. Once you clicked it, it created 50 accounts. I close it. And now if you go into this finder, you see that all the accounts are already created. See how quick it was? Now you don't have that option in your exam or the assignment or your test. You have to create the accounts manually. So this is an exercise of how we import the accounts. Now, we are going to go through the different types of accounts and see how we can uh, find the accounts if you were to change it or you can change the account and any of those functionalities. So if you go into the chart of accounts, you see now you have all these accounts. So if you want to change anything, you can simply go into the chart of accounts click on the account and make the change to whatever you want or anything other than the account number you can change no problem okay but you want to make sure that if you change it it's going to change your reporting for the entire year so you want to make sure any changes you do it takes effect and it gets uh, get changed from the beginning to the end okay so that's your exercise 3.6 is show you how to create an account, how to delete an account. So, uh, I mean, how to modify the account. Now, if you wanted to process or delete or inactivate an account, you can do that from here as well. So for example, if I look at 4510 account, 4510 account 200, and I have 410 account 100. Okay, so if you wanted to delete that, you can simply go in, you click right here, and make this account inactive first and then you save and then you click delete okay and then you say you are sure delete you say yes and if you say no it will not delete okay so i want you guys to follow the step that book tells you but to delete or insert the accounts that you need to insert, but that's how you will delete an account. The next exercise that I want you to show you is how to create an allocation account. So, so the allocation accounts are simply the same account that you're creating, but you allocate that to the different account. For example, right here, you see that there's an insurance expenses, there's a telephone expenses, there's not allocation expenses. So what you want it to do is you want to create an account called 6020 and we want to call that as a telephone expense account. And then what we wanted to do with that account is we want to make that account as an auto allocation account and have those accounts allocate the telephone expenses between 100 and 200 based on 30 and 70 percent. Okay, so how can we do that? So in your assignment or your test, I'm not going to tell you which one is an auto allocation account. I'll give you an example. So the way that I'll write it is, so the telephone expenses are the common expenses that need to be allocated between the two departments, 100, 30%, 200, 70%. Uh, uh, 70%. So create an appropriate account for allocation of telephone expenses. So in that case, you know that there's supposed to be three telephone expense account. One is a telephone expense account, which is just an account itself, which is supposed to be an auto allocation account. Then there's supposed to be two more accounts, 60, 20, 100 for the 100 division, and 60, 20, uh, 200 for the 200 division, okay? So right now, if you see that I already have 60, 20, 100 and 60, 20, 200, but I don't have 60, 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this window and click on the account. And I will type in 60, 20. Now, when I come here, I'm going to put that as a telephone expenses. 
and this one is an ACC because this is not specific to the division, it is just an account itself. The normal balance is debit and it's an income statement. And the category of that account is fixed expenses. Fixed charges. And then what we do is we come right here and make this account a control account, uh, sorry, the auto allocation account. And once I select the auto allocation account, another window opens right here to identify the allocation. So you click on the allocation and because the system is going to create the entry automatically for the auto allocation. So you want to make sure that source code is identified. So you click on this browser and select the source code to be the allocation. So reallocation account. So that means anytime the system will do an entry for the auto allocation, it will select the source code and RT. And you know that this was not an entry created by somebody. It was created by the system using the auto allocation. Now you need to identify the accounts. So that telephone expenses need to be allocated between TEL 100 and TEL 200. You scroll down and find TEL 602100. We said this one's supposed to have 30% of that. And now remember what I said, if you want to insert a new line, you press the insert key from your keyboard. Then you go into the second line, then you select the second account, which is 60, 20, 200. And that one is going to be 70%. Now, the bottom line is that the total of these accounts has to be 100%. So right now we have telephone 100, telephone 200, 30 and 70, and that is your total percentage. Because when you allocate, you allocate the total amount. So therefore, you allocate the full 100% into between these accounts. And then you click add. So this is how you create an auto allocation account. Okay. So now when you complete this uh, using your test book, you are going to go to exercise 3.8. There are different auto allocation accounts that you're required to do. So you create that and that will give you a good understanding of how the auto allocation accounts work. Okay. So now we close this window. In the next exercise, uh, 3.9, you're asked to create a default closing account. So one of the important information that you need to know is that you cannot record any transaction or you can create a new fiscal year or close a previous fiscal year unless you set up the default closing account. You guys know that from accounting 111, the, uh, the closing entry is a process of closing all the temporary accounts into an equity account. So if you have a company that equity account which it need to close is a retained earning account. So now what you need to do is you need to set up the default closing account to be a retailed account, uh, retained earning account. So I hope you guys remember from the previous lecture, we need to go to a specific place to set up the default closing account. And where was that? That was GL setup. Uh, I think it was under the option. You go into the account, and that is your default closing account. Remember when we came here last time and there was no GL account, now we should have it. Now you select on this browser. You see that we have so many accounts, but it only shows one account because system knows that that the closing account has to be a retained earning account. So it only shows you the account that was the retained earning account. So you only set up one account as a retained earning account, which was 4100. You select it and that's, and you click save. Now I'm gonna give you guys a, a, a quick advice here. I know this happens in, uh, in the test time as well. When you set up your chart of accounts and when I ask you to set up a default closing account and you come here and you don't see any closing account. The reason for that is when you create the retain earning account, you may select a wrong account class. If you create a retain earning account and you set up the retain earning as a balance sheet account, it's not going to show up here. So if anything like that happens, don't panic. 
you close the screen, go to your chart of accounts, pull up the retain earnings and make sure that account is set up to retain earnings. Right? And then you close it. And then you come back, change, set, set this up and you should all good to go. Now in the next step, what I want you to do is I want you to know how to print a chart up account. Now that's an important piece. So when you do going to do your first assignment or you're going to do your first test, 25% uh, of the marks is 25 to 30% of the marks is going to be your chart of account. So when you set up all the accounts, you want to make sure that you print the report and give it to me for grading purposes. Okay. So now how you pull up the report. So very first thing is you want to make sure you print destination to set up to preview. So, so you're going to print destination, change it to preview, paper size, orientation, and A4. And you press OK. Now you're going to pull up the reports. Now all the GL reports are in one place. You're going to GL reports. And then from here, you find where the chart of account is. It is right here. So you click on the chart of account. And now be careful with that as well. Sometimes you don't pay attention. You print whatever is on your screen. You want to make sure you look at all the options. If I ask you to print me a short form, then you print me a short form. If I ask you to print me a long form, you print me a long form. If you give me a wrong report, you're going to lose the marks for something you have already done. So if you give me a short form, I cannot verify your class of accounts or your uh, the normal balance is, I cannot give you a mark for that. So make sure you pick up the correct form. So you say, it's. I ask you to chart of account long form. You select that and you click print. Now you when click print, you see that report has your name on it. Because remember, you change the company name with your name on it. So you save that. So now this is a report. Now what you want to do is, now you guys are not printing it to a paper, you're printing it as a PDF. Now to export that to a PDF, you click on this export icon and you say what type do you want? I want a PDF. You press OK and then you press OK for all the pages. Now it's going to ask you a location. Okay, So you, you can leave it on the temporary file and download it on your computer right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say lesson 3 chart of account detail and I press save and now I don't want to take any risk I go into my files go into temporary files and I click on this report which is right here and I'll just click on this arrow and click download then this file is downloaded on my C drive under download so I'm okay now if something happens, I have my account, I have my report saved on my computer. Then I'm going to continue with my work. So I will close this screen and I will close the chart of account as well. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to print the allocation account as well. So for the allocation account, you do say go to the same place, but just change the format of that is to be allocation account. And you click print and this one only going to show you the allocation account so in this example i only did one allocation account but if you have done three or four allocation account it will show all of them now you do the same thing for printing export report okay okay again and now it's going to do the same thing lesson three chart of account now it's not detail it's a allocation and you close this and you close this okay so that's how you will print the allocation account so once you finish with the chapter the last thing that you want to do is a database dump so remember if you're working with the app stream you have to do a database load first and when you finish you're gonna have to have a database dump now, if you're working on your C drive and you have the software installed on your computer, you don't need to database load, but I still recommend you to create a database dump and save it on your computer as your own database. So that way, if you need 
to work on something you don't wait for me you can use your own database file and continue with from your backup so how do we create a database dump same we we did in the last week so your first thing that you want to do is you want to create a folder so if you're working on c drive you create a folder on your c drive but if you're working on on the app stream you create a folder on the temporary file so here i'm going to call this as end of lesson three i put my initial at the end so i know that this is not the database that you copied from my blackboard but it is the database that you have done your work on yourself so i will press enter and it will create a folder and then we need to do is database dump so how do we do a database dump you go to the admin services and click on database dump and then remember you're not working on app that you're working on on that so you click on omni that and you're going to give a location we say where do you want to dump this file to i want to dump it to end of lesson 3 ds press ok and i'm going to click dump it's going to give you a warning so do you want to delete any file that are already in this in that folder we know there was nothing so we are okay in pressing ok okay we are not done yet you always have to do om that and om sys we have to do both of them in the same folder so now it's the turn for omni sys and same location we click dump okay you're done so you're done dumping the database now you guys need to do the file and zip the file as well so now to zip the file what you need to do is so you can go into this icon with the multiple application and now i can go in right here and i want to zip that folder so to zip the folder i click on 7 zip find that folder where i created a backup right here instead of extract i'm going to zip it so i click on the plus sign and press ok now what it did it zipped that file now i want to save this one on my computer so i go into my files into temporary files i didn't save the enter uh, the child of account allocation account first i want to download that then i'm going to download the zipped file end of lesson three download so now i go into my download file i see that this is the, my backup and these are the reports so now on my c drive if i have created my folder already for accounting 204 and i call these database files and this is database backup so this backup is i can put my initial saying these are the backups that i'm creating these are my backups okay so what i can do now is i go into the download and copy this backup or cut it and put it into this backup right here now this is my backup end of lesson ds okay and now if i like to create a backup for different companies so what i do is i've created omni and i've put all the omni database into the omni folder okay so i don't have to create the database uh, so this uh, database for omni are here now if you're working on the challenge exercise you can create a folder for challenge exercise and create a backup for all the challenge exercises in that particular folder now if you want to save the reports you can also save the reports in the same place as well so i'm going to say omni and now the reports that i saved i wanted to save it again you guys are not giving these reports to me so you can keep it just for on your record so you can have that for your comparison if you're working with another student and you want to do a comparison you can do that as well okay so now i'm happy everything that i have done i saved the reports and i'm okay for closing the file okay so now what you do is you close this and we finish with chapter three and what we can do is we can sign out from the session from the session okay and that's how you will complete chapter three okay 
And if you're working on your computer, you simply close your stage 300 and you're happy and then you close it. And then when you're ready to start chapter four, you start chapter four, okay? So this is how you complete chapter three and then I will come back with another recording for chapter four. And that is also part of the work that you need to complete for week two as well. Thank you everyone for listening to the lecture and I'll see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.